All right, so we have a community request from a commenter on YouTube that says, hey, I need help multiplying two columns together to produce a third column. So let's take a look at this. First of all, I do read the comments and I will respond and in fact, make a video. Please make a tutorial on how to make a data frame column for the products of the values in two columns before it. So this sounds like just multiplying two columns together to produce a third column. And let's see what that looks like. So, oh yeah, let's see what that looks like. Awesome, so what I'm gonna do here is, let's first zoom in and I'm gonna import pandas. And before I do that, I wanna make a, just a little bit of documentation for myself and so I remember where I'm going. Um, multiplying, uh, uh, columns together to make a third column. And we're actually going to look at this two different ways. Goal, um, multiply columns. Great. So now I know what I'm doing. And if you didn't see what I did there, I just changed the format of the cell from code to markdown. And then that is going to allow you to do markdown, which gives you some nice text formatting. So first I'm going to import pandas as PD. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import some data. So I'm going to say df equals uh, pd. So I call the pandas library. And then I'm going to call read CSV, which is I have some data sitting on here. Um, and if you want to get the same exact data, then you can go ahead and uh, clone this GitHub repo. And then you can run the same exact code that I'm doing. So in the folder above, I'm going to say data. And then I have a data, data set that's streetlist.csv. We use this for another um, another tutorial here. I'm going to say df.head so I can remember what the data looks like. And I have a ton of columns here. Um, and in fact, because I'm zoomed in, five is a little too many. So I'm actually, I just want to see two columns. So I'm going to say df2. Great. And so you can see I go through here and I have a bunch of different columns. Um, a lot of them are NAs. I have some dates, but we're trying to multiply some numbers here. And so I see that site order is an integer, which is good. And I see that tree ID is, a, is also an integer. Now, normally it probably wouldn't make sense to multiply an ID by a site order, but because we're just doing an example here, we're gonna do this. And so there are a, uh, there's a few ways we can do this. Let's do it, let me first uh, write down the method that we're gonna do. So in the hotkey to do this, I just click escape. So it like exits and the cursor isn't there anymore. Let me zoom up here. So the cursor isn't there anymore. And then if you click M, it's gonna do markdown. Now you're still not in the cell. And so if you click enter, then it enters your cursor back in the cell. So if I were to redo that, you see here I have my cursor there. I'm gonna click escape, M, enter. And then you get in markdown. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make this an H4. I'm gonna say method one, um, multiply series. Apply series together. Okay, great. And so the way I'm gonna do this is if, say we wanna multiply this tree ID by site order, well, I'm just gonna do tree ID. There's my column right there. And then if I wanted to show you the other column, which is just site order, then I have the site order right there. And really it's as simple as just multiplying these two together. And then what you get is the multiplication, oops. And I just deleted a cell by accident and to undo that, you can do undo delete cells. I just wanted to leave that line right there. Now, I like to always just triple check that this is correct. And so the way I do this is I'm gonna say 46,534 times seven. Let's do that, four, five, three, four, times seven, three, two, five, seven, eight, three, three, two, five, seven, three, eight. And that's what we wanted, so that's exactly it. And if you wanted to turn this into a new column, well, you could say um, multiplied column equals the output of your multiplication. You run that, and then all of a sudden, you look at your DF again, and let's go to the very, I don't wanna, I'm gonna do a DF.head, just do three. You go to the very end, and you have your multiplied column, which is your new column right there, okay? So that's method one. Now let's say you wanted to get a little fancier. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, and I'm gonna make this an H4, method two. Um, what you could do, you can do it kind of a longer way, but it gives you a bit more flexibility. Uh, so I'm gonna iterate through columns and multiply, okay? So in another tutorial, oh, and if you go to dataindependent.com, there's actually a whole blog post on five methods to iterate through columns. And the one we're gonna be looking at right now is just iter rows. And so the way you do this 
is I want to iterate through each one of the rows in my data frame, much like a for loop. And I'm going to do this by saying for row in df.iter rows. And with that, I'll just say print row. And you can see what comes out. You can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff that pops out of here. And really what it's doing is it's printing the index first, and then it's printing a series, which is which represents the row. And so in order to pull out that index, I'm just going to say I right here. So I'm actually doing a little bit of unpacking, meaning, hey, I know you're going to return me two values. So I'm going to expect two values here. And you'll see that with the row, I'm just going to print row. I'll rerun that again. And this is a very big data frame. So you can see it's giving me a hard time here. In fact, it's giving me such a hard time that I'm just going to stop that for a second. And another little trick I like to do is if you just want to print the first 10 rows or iterate through the first 10 rows, I just do a dot head and then do dot rows after or dot iter rows after that. So now it's only doing the first 10 rows, which is nice. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, what I want to do here is I want to multiply the tree ID times the site order. So tree ID. So we print the tree ID. There's all my tree IDs. Let's say I wanted to print the site order again. Row site order. There's that. And to make it not confusing, I'll print a new line in between. Okay, great. And then now what I'm going to do is I want to print uh, row tree ID times row site order. Then you have that same multiplication that you're doing right there. Fabulous. But it's like there's not much, it doesn't really show you how much. Um, the power of the flexibility that you can do with this. And so say you wanted to do all of this, you know, times, eh, you know, let's, let's do, I want to do the tree ID divided by two times the site order. Okay, cool. Now you have that, which is great. Um, or say there was a third column in your data set, then you could just do the third column and say multiply third column here. But either way, you have your value right here. And it's like, okay, well, how do I get this on my data frame? Well, the easiest and most straightforward way is what I would do is I would put this into a result. Oops, result equals that. Okay, great. And then once you have this result, I want to put it into a list. Um, so let's just say mm, results list dot append result. Now you'll notice here that we haven't actually created our results list yet. And so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say results list just equals an empty list. Cool. Let's get rid of this because I don't want to print any more stuff. And because we're not, go I want to do it through the whole thing. I'm going to remove the df data rows. We do this. It's going to take a second because it's going through each different um, each different row in the data set, which is a massive, massive data set. And the other thing I should call it here too is you'll notice how this is actually slower. And so it's really nice if you can just work with series as a whole because then there's a little bit of vectorization that happens in the back end, and pandas will do optimization for you. Df data rows while flexible it is a bit slower but you see that it happened right it just finished right there and if i do length of results list you, we can actually see how big this is you can see it's 193,000 rows long and so the same thing is if you wanted to assign this as a column in your new data frame i'll just call this number two and i'll say it equals results list cool that was pretty quick let's look at df head again and there we go, multiplied column two, and it's different numbers because I did uh, the division between these two right here. Um, so that's multiplying columns in pandas. I'm sure there's a million other ways you could probably figure this out, but I would try to stick to one of these two methods, which ends up, uh, ends up working out best for me. Awesome. Thanks for the question, and let us know if you have any more questions. Happy to do a tutorial on it.